Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on distance time graphs further examples. In the previous tutorial, we analyzed this distance time graph here before completing an example where we had to use the information provided to draw a distance time graph. The examples in this tutorial will build on what we have already covered to help you become more familiar with typical exam style questions. Let's take a look at example one. In this example we are given Anil cycled from his home to the park. Anil waited in the park then he cycled back home. And here is a distance time graph for Anil's complete journey. So this is the distance time graph where the distance from home in kilometers goes across the vertical axis and the time of day goes across the horizontal axis. Coming on to part A, at what time did Anil leave home? To answer this we need to come to the distance time graph where we note that Anil's journey starts at this point here. And this point is between 0900 and 0910 so this point is 0905 and therefore Anil left home at 0905. In part B we are asked what is the distance from Anil's home to the park? Once again, coming on to the distance time graph, we note that this stage of the distance time graph corresponds to the journey from Anil's home to the park. And to find the distance, we just come across horizontally like so, and we note that this point is between 6 and 8 kilometers, therefore it's 7 kilometers. So in part B, the distance from Anil's home to the park equals 7 kilometers. And in part C, how many minutes did Anil wait in the park? So when Anil is waiting in the park, he's stationary, and therefore this stage of the distance time graph corresponds to the period where he is waiting in the park. He starts waiting in the park from this point, which is between 0930 and 0940. Therefore, he starts waiting at 0935. And he waits until this point here, which is between 0940 and 0950. Therefore, the point is 0945. So, Anil waits from 0935 until 0945. So, in part C, Anil waited in the park for 10 minutes. Here is example 2. In this example we are given Claire leaves home and travels 15 kilometers to a shop. She spends 10 minutes at the shop. She then returns home at a constant speed of 45 kilometers per hour. And in part A we need to complete the travel graph for Claire's journey. You can now pause the video and have a go at this question and when you are ready for the solution please press play. In order to complete the travel graph, we first need to interpret the stages of the travel graph we are given. In this first stage, we can see that the distance increases linearly with respect to time. And if we come across, we can see that the distance goes up to 15 kilometers. And therefore, the first stage of the travel graph given corresponds to this first line where Claire leaves home and travels 15 kilometers to a shop. In the second stage of the travel graph, there's no distance covered. So during this stage, Claire is stationary, meaning that she is waiting. Now, the waiting period starts at this point, which is at minute 25. And the waiting period ends at this point, which if we come down, is at minute 35. So Claire is waiting from minute 25 until minute 35 which is 10 minutes and therefore the second stage of the travel graph corresponds to the second line here where we're told that she spends 10 minutes at the shop. Therefore to complete the travel graph 
we need to draw Claire's return journey where she travels back home at a constant speed of 45 kilometers per hour. So we have a speed in kilometers per hour and we know that the distance back home is 15 kilometers. So therefore we can find the time it takes Claire to get back home. And to do that we use the formula speed equals distance over time. Now the speed is 45 and the distance is 15. So we substitute these, therefore 45 equals 15 divided by t. Multiply through by t, 45t equals 15. And then divide by 45, we have t equals 15 over 45, which equals 1 over 3 hours. Therefore, the time to travel from the shop back home is 1 over 3 hours. Now hours here, because the speed is in kilometers per hour. But if we look at the horizontal axis, the time is given in minutes. So therefore we need to convert from hours to minutes. We know that one hour equals 60 minutes. And therefore one over three hours equals one over three multiplied by 60, which equals 20 minutes. So it takes Claire 20 minutes to get back home. So she leaves the shop at minute 35 and it takes her 20 minutes to get back home therefore she gets back home at minute 55 and this point here represents when she's back home and therefore to complete the travel graph we just join this point with this point like so. Let's take a look at example 2 part B. In part B we need to work out Claire's average speed on a journey back home in meters per second. We know from above on a journey back home her speed was 45 kilometers per hour. So we have a speed but what we need to do is go from kilometers per hour to meters per second. To do that we first note that one kilometer is 1000 meters as we need to go from kilometers to meters and one hour is 60 minutes and one minute is 60 seconds. Therefore one hour equals 60 multiplied by 60 which equals 3600 seconds. And we've done this because we need to go from hours to seconds. So 45 kilometers per hour then equals 45 multiplied by 1000 because there are 1000 meters in a kilometer over 3600 since there are 3,600 seconds in an hour, meters per second. And then this question is a calculator question, so you can just put this through in your calculator. And we get that 45 kilometers per hour equals 25 over 2, or 12.5 meters per second. We can now come on to example 3, which is the final example in this tutorial. In this example we are given, Pete visited his friend and then returned home. The travel graph shows some information about Pete's journey. Now here's a travel graph where the distance from home in kilometers goes across the vertical axis and the time of day goes across the horizontal axis. And in part A we need to work out Pete's speed for the first hour of this journey in kilometers per hour. To do that we will need to use the formula speed equals distance over time and because we want Pete's speed in the first hour of his journey we know that the time will be one hour. To find the distance we come to the travel graph. We note that Pete's journey starts at this point at 1.30 p.m. and the first hour brings us until 2.30 p.m. So the distance covered in the first hour then is 10 kilometers. So we go from 0 until 10 in the first hour, so that's a distance of 10 kilometers. And now we just substitute 10 kilometers for distance, 1 hour for time, and we have that peak speed for the first hour equals 10 divided by 1 
which equals 10 kilometers per hour. Coming on to part B, we need to work out the total distance traveled by Pete on the whole journey. You can now pause the video and have a go at this question and when you are ready for the solution, please press play. To find the total distance, we need to come to the distance time graph and look at the distance covered in each stage. From the previous part, we know that in this first stage, Pete covers a distance of 10 kilometers. During this stage, Pete is stationary, so there's no distance covered. But in the following stage, we can see that the distance goes from 10 until 18 kilometers. So therefore, Pete covers a further distance of 8 kilometers. After he's stationary once again, and then that brings us on to the final stage of Pete's journey, the return journey. And here he covers a distance of 18 kilometers as he goes from 18 to 0. So in the first stage, Pete covers a distance of 10 kilometers. In the next stage, a further distance of 8 kilometers, and then finally a distance of 18 kilometers back home. So to find the total distance traveled by Pete, we add 10 plus 8 plus 18, which equals 36 kilometers. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.